So my name is Billy. Um, I'll do the introduction slide. Thank you, Federico. It's always a good thing to actually see things like this. But it is a little weird to see a picture of yourself like right in front of you, out in front of everyone. So it's a, it's a little different. So um, who am I? I'm an engineering director at Canonical. I'm responsible for Ceph, OpenStack, OVN, HPC. I, I run uh, the engineering team to actually help put the software into the Ubuntu packages and build solutions around all these particular products. Um, and my mission in general is to bring Ceph, OpenStack, OVN, HPC to the widest possible audience that's out there. So uh, many of you may consume our tools directly, may consume packages from us. Uh, we, we help work, make sure that the upstream open source Ceph versions find a fantastic home in different distributions. Uh, you have multiple choices and one of the things that we like to do from Ubuntu is to make sure that we are a viable choice in many different places for that. Um, but we're here to talk about Microsoft. Um, and one of the things about Microsoft, so I said that one of our objectives is to, to, to provide it, Seth to the widest possible audience, essentially. And so many of you have probably heard of Microsoft before, but what is our mission? What are we trying to do here? Right? It is the simplest possible way for users to adopt Seth. Now this may not be the final place that they land on. It may just be that gateway drug that keeps them like hooked and really kind of tying into different pieces. But we want to give them the chance to actually explore it. And that's what Microsoft is about. It's about being the simplest possible way to actually uh, get into Seth. Now I want to be clear here, micro, right? Before we jump into this, I've heard this multiple times, multiple times, micro, micro, micro. It's not about the cluster size when we get into micro, right? It's not that I'm gonna have like a three node cluster, or two node cluster, or something like that. Yes, you can do that, but that's not the purpose. The whole point of micro is about the effort, the effort for the user, right? How much effort does it take you to get started, to get set up? Do you need to understand the Ansible playbooks? Do you need to understand Ceph ADM? How many different pages of the manual do you need to go and actually run to actually get started, right? So it's about the user. It's about the learner. Right? So if someone's actually going to get started, think about when you were wanting to get interested in different uh, technologies in your life. When you were in university, when you were just exploring different pieces, what did you do? You went and you tried things. You were exploring things. When you went into different areas of, of work, you're trying to try out different pieces of technology and see how they fit. And so we need to make sure that it's there for the learner as well. It might be someone who's onboarding into your company. You just made a fantastic hire, but they need to understand how things work. Microsoft is an easy way to get them to be able to explore it. And so we want to be able to actually help them in there. It's about the developer. It's not just about these different people along the way. It's about how do you actually help people, uh, the developer, get involved. Maybe you have a task where you need to actually develop some pieces of software they integrate with a storage solution, whether it's, I need to, how's it gonna interact with the CephFS, right? How's it gonna interact with Raiders Gateway? How's it gonna interact with a, an RBD that's mapped here? How can I try those different things? Make it easy, make it for the developer so they don't have to go and get hardware that's complex, it's expensive to allocate, who knows how it actually works in the labs these days. You don't wanna go and ask for hardware, you don't wanna ask for money. Do it on your laptop. Make it easy, make it easy for the developers to be able to try these things. Make it easy for the operator. It's not just about the user, the learner, the developer, because at the end of the day, all the work that we're doing, it has to go into production, it has to be used. If, if it doesn't get run somewhere, was it really worth it, right? I mean, that's, that's why we all got into this game in the first place, is to actually be able to service operators and end users and be able to make it a joy and a treat and a pleasure to actually uh, run. So the operator absolutely is a big focus, and so trying to think about how will it be for them to actually use different things. And it's about the integrators, right? So we have to think about different places here. So the way that micro comes together when it comes to our, our Microsoft story is it's about how can we actually provide an easy to use delivery mechanism so that you can get Ceph as part of integrated solutions out there, right? nice and atomic, not necessarily bound to the specific operating system version that you want, but you're still getting security updates, you're still getting maintenance updates, you're still getting different pieces of the puzzles that you want there. So we try and make it easy for the integrators there. So it's about everybody. It's really about you, right? Micro is not about the complexity. We're engineers, we like to have knobs, we like to have 
all the little tweaks and things. We're not so sure, like, well, if you do this, it will work in this case. If you do this, it will work in that case. We love those. It's perfect. It's great. It helps us. But micro is about the effort for you to get adopted into certain pieces. So from now on, when you think about micro, think about it like you, Seth. Micro. Seth is for you. So I'd really like you to think about it from that perspective. OK. Rant over. Um, so it does come in a snap package. So Microsoft, for those of you who don't know what it is, it comes in a snap package. It's a universal packaging format. There's multiple different ones out there. Um, we think of it as an application container when we talk about it. It has secure um, pieces as part of it. So it uses AppArmor to actually provide strictly co strict confinement. Uh, it can run in Ubuntu Core and other type of OSs such that it has a mutable operating system uh, aspects, which is really nice. It has rollback capabilities, so if you do an upgrade and that pet software package didn't work, you can roll back. Doesn't mean that you can roll back the data that's on disk for your, for the, for your OSDs, but you can roll back with some of the data that's actually saved, and we can talk about those in little uh, sidebars and stuff like that. And then it has content interfaces so that you can connect uh, with the integrations and things. So it should be simple, right? We want to make it the easiest one to be able to adopt. So sudo snap install Microsoft. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Maybe you want a different version, though. Maybe you want Quincy. Maybe you want Reef. Maybe you want Squid in the future. Um, just tell us which one you want. It's a simple sudo snap install Microsoft with the channel of the version. You want to upgrade? There's a refresh to the next channel, and it will upgrade that particular Microsoft installation to the next, next version of Ceph. Make it easy for the users and for people e uh, to adopt it. OK. So we were talking about the developer scenario earlier, right? So maybe your task is to write backup for MySQL, and you want to integrate it into an S3 interface. Like, sure, there's a bunch out there, but your company's got some secret sauce, right? You've got this special backup tool that's going to actually be able to integrate it and put it up into an S3 thing. So what are you going to do? Well, you could go and get S3 credentials. You'll need that anyways. And you'll have to like play with it and try with it at the end of the day. But Ceph's kind of awesome, right? Like you can actually have S3 on your local machine. So snap install Microsoft. Bootstrap the cluster so that you have actually some cluster that's there. Add some disks, right? Not OSDs. OSDs are great. What the heck are OSDs? People think about disk, like the basic user thinks about just a computer, like a disk to actually store stuff there. And then enable the Rados gateway, and now you have an S3 endpoint that's literally right there on your actual laptop, which actually moves you faster along the way as you're, as you're developing. So it's easy for the developer. But because it's small, because it's, it's just simple and focused on being able to provide the basic services here, there's other ways that you can do this, right? You check in your code to GitHub. You wanted to make sure that it's there, so there's GitHub Actions. The community's actually started rallying around this to build uh, developer pieces. So there's people that have gone out and created actions within GitHub to be able to stand up your S3 interface using Microsoft under the covers. So now that you can actually start and run your test, this is someone who works on a database backup application specifically, so I chose it specifically for the example. So. Um, but now you can build this as part of your CI. And so some of the things that you're actually testing, you don't, you don't have to have a, a Ceph cluster that stood up internally, right? You can just run one locally in your CI. It's a, small, it's a small system. And of course, people might have scripts to set all that up, and then you update it for the next release of Ceph, or you update it for whatever. It's a snap. It should all be contained within so that you can have the same consistent user interface for actually how to do those pieces. At the end of the day, it's just Ceph inside of it, and these are just little packaging bits to actually pull it for, forth. It's for the user and learner again, right? So we put it on a single node, but what happens in more complex, complex cases? You want to actually bring someone as a new operator on. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're investing and you're doing a co consultation with a company and want to do a deployment of Ceph, and maybe you're looking at a larger Ceph scale, but they need some training, right? How are they going to do some training? One of the ways you can do some training is you can help bring them up with Microsoft and walk them through some of the basic scenarios that actually go on there. So it's not just for what your deployment was, it's for actually delivering education, delivering training, and being able to provide it as a learner, as a user, 
as someone who's helping someone else, you have a way of doing it easily without having a huge set of, uh, a huge set of hardware, or you can put it on their cluster and they can use it that way. So you can bootstrap the cluster, just as we were talking previously on node zero, add your disks if you want to encrypt them, simple as just dash dash encrypt, so might as well. Um, go to your second node. Uh, on the first node, you say, I wanna add this node, so you're basically you're acknowledging you're gonna create a token. On the second node, you go and you take that token and you say, okay, now I've been, I wanna join this cluster based on this token. Uh, and then that node's part of the cluster. You can go and add those disks from that particular node. Go on to how many ever nodes you want, right? We talked about in the beginning, it's micro is not about the scale. Micro is about how much effort it takes. And so you can go to each particular node. And these commands, they can be wrapped into Ansible playbooks if you want. They can be wrapped into whatever particular automation flavor you want. Heck, I've seen some really fun stuff when it comes down to this. You know, um, MDNS discoveries where they're actually broadcasting tokens across so that they can actually discover over, um, over, over multicast and the, the nodes actually auto cluster. Pretty neat to see. Can't imagine the security nightmare behind that, but you know. <laughs> uh, and integrations. So from an integration perspective, you know, we actually have seen it integrated in multiple places. And Canonical is doing this as part of some of our solutions, and I'm not trying to pitch our solutions, I'm trying to just say, as we look at how can this integrate, and, and that it's actually part of the scale to actually show you that it, where it's at. So uh, this is part of MicroCloud, which again, micro, small, but it uses LexD, it uses KVM to actually then provide Ceph as part of these particular deployments of uh, virtual, in, uh, virtual machines, uh, LexD containers, that type of thing. Um, OpenStack, uh, the OpenStack platform that we're building is built on Microsoft as well um, as part of this. We have Kubernetes integration, so if you look at Microcates, uh, go out, snap install Microcates, uh, snap install Microsoft, pair them together with a simple connection and suddenly you have uh, Rook CSI basically configured within your, your Microsoft cluster that's actually scalable and you can, you can put it out. Yes, you can run Rook if you really want to. Uh, I personally, like not to knock anyone who loves Rook, I'm not a fan of having my storage being managed inside of a container, but hey, that's just me. That's me personally. Um, but the integrations are there so that you can actually tie it together. And so it's just a Ceph cluster though. Right? So if you're running Proxmox and you want to actually go out and stand up Proxmox, you know, all you need is a key. Stand up your Ceph cluster and go and actually pair your, your, your key in there and suddenly you have Proxmox tying to, to Ceph. Super easy to get started, super easy to get running with it. It's not, it's, it, there are limitations, not everything's there. So it is strictly confined, there's some interesting access that you actually have with the kernel in different places. Um, and that's fine, we're working through some of those pieces, but it doesn't have everything. As we've been slowly adding it, I wanna just be upfront, this is what's there, what's not there. Um, the, the Ceph dashboard, love it, it's great, has super strong ties to orchestrators. There's no orchestrator associated with uh, Microsoft, and so you'll get a variety of uh, interesting challenges when actually looking at the dashboard from that perspective. Um, we have not, been able to do the NFS Ganesha support at this point in time, so NFS is not there. You can do CFFS, but not NFS. Um, we don't have load balancers integrated, so if you have Rados gateway clusters and you have three of them and you wanna be able to have a VIP or HA proxy to go back to the different, that's on you. Uh, it's not part of the Microsoft piece, which is fine. Um, there's a limited number of tunables, so you, it's not that you can go and just like touching every single thing within the Ceph configuration file that you possibly can. Uh, you can touch some of them, not all of them, but you know what, you can set many of those settings through Ceph anyways, through the, through the mon configs and stuff. Um, and one big thing that I just wanna call out is it doesn't use LVM. Uh, one of the big reasons for this is that it runs inside of a snap, which is a container that's actually deployed. So if we build it on Ubuntu 22.04, you can run it on Ubuntu 20.04, you can run it on RHEL, you can run it on CentOS, you can run it on different platforms, which may have different versions of LVM, right? And if you're actually looking at the on-disk structure, you will have all kinds of fun, 
if you have different versions of LVM back and forth between that don't have compatible header drews there. So we've intentionally made the choice of not including LVM so that we don't run into some different challenges.